Spectre Console allows you to turn your C Sharp console apps into visually appealing, informative applications. In this series of videos, we're going to learn how to take full advantage of this library. Each lesson will be given about 10 minutes or less. And once you get started, you can jump right into the video that most interests you without necessarily going in order. The source code for each video will be available at the, in the link in the description. In this lesson, we're going to get Spectre Console set up and go over a few configuration items on your computer that might cause an issue with some of the features we'll be using. If you like this series, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and visit imtimcorey.com for more training resources. Let's get started. So here we have a console application. It's .NET 9. There's nothing installed right now. So let's go ahead and right-click on dependencies, manage NuGet packages, go to browse and search for Spectre. And notice that Spectre is, it's got the R-E, not E-R. We're searching for Spectre.console. Don't worry about the rest of the things right now. There's uh, CLI and JSON and others. We just need console. So let's hit install. The current version is 0 0.50.0. So this is a mature library, even though it doesn't say 1.0, um, just so you know. So we're going to use a, have a using directory at the top using spectre.console. Now I'm going to set up a really quick little uh, console bit just to show that's working and to start to look at I want you to run it too to make sure that it's going to work on your terminal. So we're going to say ANSI console. Now that's the difference. Instead of console.writeline, we're going to say ANSI console. Now you can still say console.writeline, but it's just going to use the normal console, uh, not all the, the goodies that come with Spectre console. So ANSI console uh, markup line. Now, I want to point out, we're going to learn more about all this stuff later on. We're just doing this to get a quick start into using this as a um, as an option. So in here, one quick way to do markup in line, it's kind of ugly. Don't worry about it. But we're going to say uh, red and bold. So it's going to mark the hello world text as red and bold. And we do a, a slash to close it out. So square brackets and then put your decorators or your, your uh, ways to modify the text. Again, we'll learn more about that in a future lesson. But then you put whatever text you want, and then you close it with a uh, just an empty slash. So with that, we've got something to display. Now let's uh, duplicate this line a couple times. And this one we're going to leave at a regular hello world. And this last one, we're going to change to be a slow blink. Just to kind of show you what we can do inside of Spectre Console. Now, we're going to keep this application going throughout our entire uh, course. So I'm going to mark this as um, uh, lesson two. And this is initial setup. Okay, and we're going, we'll comment these out as we go, or we'll put, um, yeah, we'll comment them out probably. And we'll say console.readline at the end. And I'll also say ANSI console.clear afterwards. So what this will do is it's going to pause for us to, to see what's on the screen, but then after it pauses, it's going to clear everything off and close the application. So I'll show you why that's important in just a minute. So this is our application, and we could just hit run right now and see it run, which we'll do. And we can see that we have our, our three different lines, and one of them is blinking. So we have our hello world. It is bold, but notice that the slight difference in boldness, it's not gonna you know, really jump off the page at you. This is a console and not everything's going to be, um, you know, like Microsoft Word, where it's a little bit more visible. But we also have the regular text and we have the blinking text. So if any of these don't look like what mine looks like, I'm going to show you why that might be. So the first thing to do is talk about our terminal that we'll be using. Now, what I'm going to do is notice I'm going to hit enter and it's going to clear things off. 
I'm actually going to open up Terminal itself. So I'm on Windows and I have Terminal and Terminal allows me to run a number of shells. Now, if you're not familiar with the difference is Terminal is the application that's actually running. It, it's a dumb application. Essentially, it's just a, a visual application that sends data back to a shell and says, hey, here's the information that came from the user and that's going to get information back from the shell and display it here. So in this case, it's running PowerShell. So there's two different things. There's PowerShell that's running and then Terminal is kind of the front end of that. That's the really high level overview. What that means though, is that the Terminal determines how things get displayed, which means Terminal is the one that we have to make sure can display some of these things. So we have to go to settings for this and look at what can Terminal do? Now, let's come down here to defaults. And in here, I want to look at appearance. And there's a couple of things I want to point out that might be different in yours. So you might want to look at potentially making a change. So first off, font face here. Now, I've got Cascadia code selected as my, um, my font of choice. If you choose a font, that can't do, for example, bolding, well, then you won't see uh, the bold text. That's one place, but don't, don't think you're done here. Uh, but Cascadia code does support things like emojis and bolding and other things. So we have Cascadia code that will work. If you choose, you can say all fonts, you can have, you know, tons of different fonts you can choose from. Um, but we're going to choose just Cascadia code because that's a really good, um, looking terminal uh, font. And this, by the way, is defaults, which means it's going to apply to all these other um, shells as long as they support these things. OK, so then we're not done yet. We also need to come down here to a section called text formatting. And by default, I believe this is set to bright colors. So text formatting for intense text style it's going to be set to bright colors, change it to bold font instead that will actually bold our font. And that should give you the first two options here. Now, we're not quite done yet. There's one more that um, for me was something that didn't work and that was the blinking. Blinking didn't work and that's because of settings. So here are my settings dialog and notice under accessibility, there is this animation effects. If this is not on, blinking will not work. Okay, so we can close it out. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to um, my, my application or my you know, project. I'm gonna say copy full path. And then I come back to my terminal. I'm gonna change the directory and I'll paste in that full path, take off the CS proj. And there we go. Now I can come here. I can say .NET run. What this will do is run my application in this particular shell. So you can try different shells if you want, if you want to see if they interact differently. But now notice when I'm done, it goes back to the beginning because that clear. So I can .NET run, see my application run, see, make sure that blink works, make sure that bold works, make sure that colors work. And once I hit the enter key, it clears the console for the next version of my run. So that's how we're going to set up our application and get it ready for Spectre console. We've got lots to cover, but for now, that's how to do initial setup and make sure that you kind of overcome some potential issues if you're on Windows with the display. Now, if you're on Mac or Linux, you may have different issues. You'll have to figure out how to turn those things on or enable those things if they're a problem for you in Mac or Linux. Okay, thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.